Paul's experience. How many of you remember Paul's conversion? We like to talk about it. Paul riding down the road to Damascus on his beast. And the Bible don't say beast, but we say on his beast. And God knocked him to the ground with a light brighter than the noonday sun. And, 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 and we get excited about that. And he began to have a conversation with God. And he said, who art the Lord? And he says, I'm Jesus of Nazareth who thou persecuted. And did you not know it's hard to kick against the prick? You know, and we get excited because we, we understand God is working on the heart of Paul. All right? We understand that God is, is converting him from his old lifestyle to a new lifestyle. So we get excited about it. And he says, Lord, what would you have me to do? How many of you ever asked God that question? Lord, what would you have me to do? And we pray and we seek God's face. And we say, Lord, I just need a little advice. And we stay on the altar and we cry to God, Lord, what would you have me to do? I told him like this. I said, listen, preacher. I said, you have to understand God's, God's order of things. I said, now here is Paul on the ground. I said, and if you let me use my vernacular, I say, he's on the ground and Jesus got his foot on his neck can tell him whatever he want to tell him because he got him in a position of submission. But he says, Paul, i tell you what I want you to do. I say, I want you to get up and go on down to Damascus because I got a man down there. I'm not going to talk to you. I got a man to tell you what you need to do. I'm saying to a Christian family life that God got a man that will tell you what to do. Uh, he's placed him here as your leader, as the shepherd of this flock. So quit wrestling and worrying about what you ought to do. Just listen to the man of God because God is not going to give you a special revelation. He's not going to bypass his leader. And when his leader speaks, that's God's speaking to you because God declares he is his oracles. In other words, he's just like uh, Lady Clinton. Uh, when she goes into a foreign country, she walks into the president's office or to the premier's office or to uh, the, the, the governing official's office, but she walks in there not as Mrs. Clinton, but she walks in there representing the United States of America and all the power of the United States backing her. So when the man of God speak to you, uh, he's got heaven backing him. When the man of God speak to you, God uh, ordained, uh, God orchestrate his word because he said, if you will acknowledge me, I will direct your path, but you've got to understand God's method of direction. Our problem, we try and bypass what God has put in place, and God will never allow you to negate what he has in place. He said that, that you should obey leadership. He said that you should follow them and, and treat them with honor very highly indeed because they watch for your soul. I said, they watch for your soul. You're trying every day of your life to be saved. You're trying to get ready to get out of here. And somebody have to tell you what you need to do. Somebody has to instruct you how to live, how to do and to be what God wants you to be. And God in his infinite wisdom made choice of pastors to lead his flock uh, and regardless of what come in from the outside I am merely the superintendent of Sacramento district but the head of this house uh, I said the head of this house is Cedric Shelby God has ordained and appointed him as the spokesman in this house and anybody that will listen to somebody 
over and above your pastor show the utmost disrespect because God has only placed one leader. One leader. Sometimes we, 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 people tell us what we think we ought to, we want to hear. Uh, uh, uh. 